Right, so in this problem, uh, we're continuing our um, exam three review questions. So I wanted to be sure and get a graphical problem in here. This is from 4.3, um, actually it's number seven, section 4.3. I said that already. <laughs> oh well, don't mind me, it's getting late. Uh, find the x-coordinate of the inflection point if the graph shown is a graph of f, b graph of f prime, and c graph of f double prime. Hmm. Well, so let's go ahead and start off with assuming the graph that we see here is the graph of f. Then can we find the inflection points? Well, remember how the inflection points are found. Um, where the curve could hold water is uh, where the curve is concave up. And where the curve would shed water, that would be where the curve is concave down. So if we kind of just start moving across, uh, concave down, concave down, looks like uh, there's a change in concavity somewhere here. This is probably right in between two and four. This is not to scale, by the way. So it looks like uh, x equals three is a change in concavity. And then we go to concave up, right? And this problem looks pretty symmetric. So at x equals five would be your next change Good. And so, um, yeah, so far those would be the only two, right? Because then the curve is concave down for the rest of the rest of the graph. Good. So x equals three and x equals five would be here. All right, let's uh, assume now that the graph you're looking at is the graph of f prime. Uh, do we have any inflection points? So, um, is there a relationship between f prime and f double prime? Let's think about that. <clears throat> so um, we know that if uh, f prime is positive, that means f is increasing, right? And f prime negative means that f is decreasing. And so what happens if you just differentiate these four functions here? What you see is that f double prime is positive means that f prime is increasing and f double prime is negative means f prime is decreasing. Right? So um, f double prime is going to be equal to zero then between where we're increasing and decreasing. Where would those points be? <laughs> well, let's, let's take a look here. Uh, it looks like f is increasing up until 2. Whoops, sorry about that. Oh no, my graph. Let me get a different color here. So uh, f is, f prime is increasing here, right? And then f prime is increasing here. And then f prime is decreasing in the other two pictures. Right? So what does that mean? That means uh, if f prime is increasing, we're concave up and then concave down, right? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so this would be concave up and concave down. My graph disappeared. Okay. So now we're just looking at where the change in concavity occurs, and it looks like it's at x equals two. Whoops, sorry about that. X equals two, x equals four, and then x equals six. All right. Uh, hmm. So let's go to the last one now. Okay, so now, um, if this is the graph of f double prime, how are we going to uh, determine if we have a change on concavity? Well, it's where the second derivative changes from negative to positive or positive to negative. And so therefore, we change colors here. Uh, we're changing from negative to positive here, right? And then f double prime is positive until we get to, oh, it's still positive. So it's positive all the way to here, right? And then it changes to negative. So it looks like 
uh, x equals 1 and x equals 7 would be the two places. Very good. All right, that was a fun problem. Uh, so let me I'll hit the pause button and we'll come back. Maybe we'll try a, a rule of some L'Hopital algebra. See you then. All right, so uh, we're looking at number 15 and 4.4. Uh, we have cosecant minus cotangent. We're heading towards zero. So, um, yeah, we may have some problems here, right? Because uh, cosecant is 1 over sine, so that's going to 1 over zero. But cotangent uh, is going to be cosine over sine, so that's also got a zero in the, its denominator. Um, hmm, I wonder what we should do. Um, so I think the first step for this this kind of a thing would be to convert things into sines and cosines, right? Just so you can see better what's happening. Uh, so cosecant would be 1 over the sine. Cotangent is uh, cosine. And once we get to this point, right, you see a common denominator. So, hey, grab it. Good. And now we see we have a 0 over 0. And so now we're set up for L'Hopital. And so for L'Hopital's rule, take the derivative of the top, uh, which will be a sine of x, divided by the derivative of the bottom, cosine of x. And so as x goes to 0, this goes to 0 over 1, which is 0. Good. Uh, so I'm going to pause here so I can write down the next question. All right, so the next question is also in 4.4. Uh, but this time we have an f of x to the g of x power. And so just to remind you what we were doing there, do you remember what we did? So we took the log first, and so taking the log we can write that as g of x times the natural log of f of x, so log first. And then secondly, now we can take the limit, take the limit, and then after you take the limit be sure and raise whatever you had to the uh, or exponentiate whatever you had put it in the exponential function okay and so in this case uh, we could write oops I don't want to put an equal sign there because this won't be equal right to what we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be taking instead of taking the limit of the original function we're going to be taking the limit of the logarithm and then at the very end we'll exponentiate to get back so when I take the log of this, it's going to be x times the natural log of the tangent of 2x. Okay, and now when I look at my limit, it looks like I've got a 0. Uh, tangent of 0 is 0. And then natural log, as your input to the log goes to 0, the natural log goes to minus infinity. Um, and so we're going to need to do something about this. And so kind of the natural thing to do would be to put x in the denominator, right? So that'd be a natural log of the tangent of 2x divided by 1 over x. Good. And now we are in a uh, fraction. We can use L'Hopital. So let's, uh, quick as a bunny, just uh, to <laughs> take the derivative of that. So that's going to be 1 over tangent of 2x times derivative of tangent is secant squared and then remember to multiply by 2 right then this is all divided by minus 1 oops minus 1 over x squared good and now uh, we're going to need to simplify before we go any further so let's uh, simplify this expression using some trig not too much just basic definitions uh, 1 over tangent is the, the tangent is sine over cosine so 1 over that would be cosine of 2x divided by the sine of 2x and then secant squared is going to be what? Uh, is that 1 over cosine squared of 2x? Uh, let's see, I'm gonna, I'll am going to go ahead and bring in the 2 right there uh, this 2 I'll go ahead and put there Okay, so I've got that term, that term, that term. Now I'll deal with the minus 1 over x squared. Invert and multiply, so that becomes minus x squared over 1. Good. And now I can even simplify further. The cosine of 2x 
cancels with one of those. And then I've got the limit as x goes to 0 of minus 2x squared divided by sine of 2x, cosine of 2x. Hmm, I've got a 2x and a 2x, sine of 2x and a 2x. Can I take advantage of that? I think I can, if I'm tricky. You don't have to be tricky, but uh, huh, let's try it. Let's be tricky first, and then we'll see if what happens if we're not tricky. Um, so I could just put the 2x here over sine of 2x. That one looks familiar. And I'm going to put the minus on the other one. Uh, so that's minus x over cosine of 2x. And now when I take this limit, what am I going to get? Uh, this first one is sine theta over theta, right? Or the reverse of that, or the, not the reverse, <laughs> the reciprocal of that. And so that's going to go to 1. And then this one's going to go to 0 over 1. So overall we get 0. So therefore my answer isn't 0, it's e to the 0, right? Which is 1. Very good. Okay, that was kind of fun. That was being tricky. What happens if I wasn't tricky and I just had to slog through it? <laughs> we could still do it. Uh, this is because this is already in the form for L'Hopital, right? So derivative of the top is minus 4x divided by, now I have to use the uh, product rule. Yep, cosine of 2x squared would be what I have times 2 minus, and then the derivative of, uh, that would be uh, derivative of cosine is minus sine, right? So that's going to be minus the sine squared of 2x times 2. Good. And now notice what happens when you put in 0. You get 0 over uh, 1 times 2 minus 0, right? So that's 0 over 2, which is 0, and that's defined, right? So that's uh, overall then we get e to the 0, which is 1. Good. So that didn't take too much extra time. All right, so that's the end of this video. Uh, let's see, I'll take a shot of espresso and we'll see if we can get through one more.